coming in our inner lakes. Going to our self storage overnighting here. It's winter time here. One more day left and we're in Prince George. Oh look, we can see some more road again. Oh and look it disappears again. It is very much winter here. But we're gonna have breakfast in the morning with good friends before we head out for our final leg to Prince George. And yeah. It is very pretty. It is a lot of snow. So here's a snow bank I climbed over to come visit my car that is hiding and living in here right now. Poor little car. Okay, so I climbed a giant snowbank to come in and check on my car. Elsie seems to be all happy, dry, but all alone in the cold. Poor car. So, Debbie, where are we? Because these don't look like um, sand piles. We're in Prince George. <laughs> and it's winter? Or is it spring? Or is it's it summer? Very much winter. Yeah. It's snowy and it's cold. Yeah, it's not very much, not much fun. And look at our trailer. The trailer looks a little dirty, considering how beautiful it was when we got it all waxed, washed and waxed in uh, Palm Desert. That was it, money down the drain. Yeah, it looks a little bit salty and pretty gross. And Debbie's old truck, her black truck, is looking pretty salty from the trip up. And their main track here, the white, the blue one over there with the white canopy is uh, really salty too. So everything is just dirty. So our trailer kind of took a beating coming to Prince George. Curtis just cannot handle it, nor can I. It is so salty, we couldn't even see out the back window. So in minus 10 weather, he is scrubbing the trailer down with soap and water and it'll create lots of ice so we have to go buy salt today. And yeah, it just needed a really good scrub. So when you haul your trailer in March in British Columbia, this is what it looks like when you get to where you're going. How's it uh, washing the vehicle in this weather, Curtis? Uh, not so much fun. We're going to make a giant ski here too. Yeah, I dare say you will. Yeah, that'll pull the trailer out of here and go wash it. Which I don't think there's even anywhere to take it. Oh. So he's very happy to be outside in the snow. We are not. We're putting on our failing air skirts which we were very disappointed in them last year, but we're putting them on this year because our freshwater tank feed is already froze and we're here for quite a while longer. There's my husband who's very grumpy. So this is why we don't like this product. We put that one in place and it has a slow leak. I mean, these are a little big to throw somewhere with soapy water to see if there's a hole. Um, and our back one may be leaking as well. So what happened last year, even though you see those cloths, we protected all the sharp edges. We put in cloths, we put in foam, we did everything, but just the wiggling of the trailer put in rub marks. Plus they inflate and deflate constantly with temperature changes. They are not made for cold weather. I don't care what air skirt says. If you're thinking of buying them, don't, don't. $4,000. Yeah, we spent 4,000 Canadian and it was the worst money we spent on our RV by far. Okay, so we've probably seen like we're pretty negative Nellies. However. Because <laughs> we are negative Nellies. <laughs> I really wanted to like this product. To me, it made perfect sense that for how we move and that we don't stay stationary for an entire winter. This winter is weird. We had no intention of doing winter anymore, but we're back because of my mom. So to us, this made sense because they're, they're easily put in, easily taken out and you just inflate them. They fill, we knew we'd have to fill some gaps because that's no big deal, but like they're just, they're not a good product. And I'm so disappointed for $4,000 what a disappointment. The thing is, if it, if it was nitrogen, you could use this. 
that'd be different. But like you said earlier with air, as the temperature drops, they lose air pressure. As the temperature rises, it comes back. So you're having to adjust them almost daily with temperature. Plus, like you said, that but one that we thought was leaking was leaking, but it's only because the two patches we did repaired, um, patches came off and failed. Yeah, I mean, think of trying to have patches on an inner tube in minus 20. Like, it, it doesn't work very well. But that so. one did actually work after we fixed it. Last winter, it did hold air after I patched it, but it didn't do well in storage. And like now, we're not doing the rest of the trailer. It's, it's fine. This is the main zone because our freshwater tank is in the back, which feeds to our pump, which is just behind our hot water tank there. And it freezes in there. Uh, Curtis figures it's because the pipe goes through the cross member to the water pump and we think that's where the cold is getting drawn in and freezing the water line because there is a heat duct that goes into the underbelly in an air gap between the water tank and the, I guess, the next There's a space joist. there where the drain line goes down and that one always has felt warm but I think it, the next zone feels cold and I think that's where it's freezing. Yeah. We're going to make big changes here anyways with our mechanical side to come but unfortunately it's one of those things that you design from minus 18 today was a minus feels like minus 25 and that's in celsius and our line froze and we got up every two hours to crack the line to run the pump some to be able to make sure that it was okay because we didn't get this done yesterday so so it froze between 5 45 and 7 45 this morning um, which often is the coldest part of the night is right before the sunrise and so yeah it sucks it sucks winter sucks winter sucks Snowbags. we're missing sand and cactus yeah yeah, yeah it's a far cry from phoenix <laughs> hey hucks what you got there what do you got what are you doing buddy okay are Debbie. you happy <laughs> why have we moved again oh my goodness so our first site we pulled in and first there was a communication issue they didn't know we were coming and then we showed up and so they plowed it out of sight but they couldn't find the sewer outlet but they said they'd find it the next day so we got all set up two days later still can't find the sewer outlet so they moved us one down then we went to drain our sewer thankfully curtis just pulled the gray and it overflowed discovering that it was frozen so two days later they brought in a steam truck and steamed it all out said it was good to go two days ago curtis pulled i, I did drop the gray he dropped the gray the first, and it was fine it was then fine. two days ago he went to drop the black and it was it's frozen froze, again and black spewed everywhere and then he quickly stopped it and quickly pulled the gray to flush it but now our site over there <laughs> is contaminated so today so technically it's not black it was brown it was, it was <laughs> brown with chunks it was not yeah. pretty so now we are in our third site in under two weeks <laughs> we're hoping this is it that we're here to stay until we're not here we to have stay. used this sewer with our little wagon yes when so we were this emptying. this seems good <laughs> We're, we're hoping this is it. Yeah. <laughs> we're hoping. But Huxley over here. He's having a blast. He loves the snow. Hey buddy, what are you doing? What do you smell? What is it, Hux? What do you got? Get it. What do you got? What is it? Get it. Not a very good catcher. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you're gonna get brain freeze. <laughs> He's got his head in the hole. What are you doing? What are you doing? It's a very sad day. Why is it a sad day? Because this is my most favorite track. This is tough. This is this my is 2015 F350 gas engine. One ton that I love. I love this truck. And it's old. How long did it take to sell? Less than an hour. I know. We should have, should have sold it for more, apparently. Yes, we've had <laughs> many above asking price cash offers trying to. This trucks are hard to get. Undercut the guy who made the original offer. And this so. truck's in beautiful shape. It was in 42, 44,000 kilometers when Debbie bought it. Yeah. 
and there's 120,000 kilometers on now, so about 65, 66,000, whatever that is, miles. Not much, it's in beautiful shape. And I have loved it. I have loved this truck very much. So, it's going And this by, is by. Curtis's most annoying thing that I do. Yeah. But yeah. this is incredible vehicle cleaner. Just don't use it on my Pledge, LC. revitalize, revive. Uh -huh. It says right on it, it's good for plastic, leather, everything. <laughs> and it is amazing. I love this stuff. Detailer's nightmare right here. It is not a detail. You're a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Debbie says goodbye to Tough today, but the bank account is going to say hello, baby. The bank account will be happy. <laughs> Debbie will be crying. <laughs> Might even shed a real tear. There you go. Oh, poor Deb. Hello, Huxley. Well, it is the first day of March. Well, no, not the first. Well, it is the first day of spring. And this is what the first day of spring looks like in Prince George. Uh, we have a ways to go for spring weather. <laughs> but today was lovely. It got to... 12 degrees Celsius and it was really pretty. Uh, Curtis has gone to the gym and I opted to take the dogs for a walk. And I'm still wearing my big old winter boots, which I'm hoping to put away very quickly. And our dogs are happy to be out walking. But it's very mild and it is a good night for a walk.